Our belief in the Greens is that we must come out of this economic crisis positively and as a different sort of society. We oppose the cuts imposed by this government and that's why we're supporting the coalition of resistance. We believe we can tackle a deficit constructively and over time without throwing people out of work. We're looking at 140,000 local authority workers being unemployed in the coming year and thousands of others whose jobs are under threat. We believe we have to come out of this without breaking down the welfare state. Local authorities are facing huge budget cuts, a quarter at least of their budgets over the next four years. And we'll see that effect at local level. I was at a conference recently because it's European Year of Anti-Poverty, somewhat ironic in the current situation, at a former workhouse in Southern. There we were meeting people from local grassroots action groups, people experiencing poverty and doing a lot already on the ground with some support from local authorities. Every one of those organisations, part of what this government would see as the big society, felt that in a year's time their organisation would not be able to exist because the money wouldn't be there. So this is a government that talks big society and makes it impossible for people on the ground. And I think we have to remember throughout the coming struggle that the responsibility for the cuts lies with the government. We have a growing crisis. High levels of, employment, of poverty, rising unemployment, and an increasingly unequal society with a growing sort of undercurrent again of racism and xenophobia. We also have an environmental crisis, problems about resources and climate change. Whatever Nick Clegg says, poverty is about lack of money. It's lack of choice, it's lack of voice. We don't tackle poverty by cutting benefits and making the poor even poorer. We tackle it through redistribution and closing the gap between rich and poor. <laughs> David Cameron expresses concern about benefit fraud, which he says stands at £1.5 billion a year. In February this year, 27 leading charities called on the government, the then government, to set ambitious targets to improve the take-up of welfare and tax credits, highlighting more than £16 billion in mean-tested benefits and tax credits that were going unclaimed every year. The, the, even Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs believes that some £30 billion, and that's an, probably an underestimate, is lost through tax evasion every year, which is fraud, and which doesn't proceed to concern the Prime Minister in the same way. And we know there's a lot more we can do to raise revenue, we can tax ha tackle tax havens, shift more of our tax towards environmental taxes, all of those shifts we want to see. But we also know we should be investing in employment to help tackle social exclusion and reduce carbon emissions. Shelter tells us that over a million children live in overcrowded housing. And we know the possible effects on their health, their learning, and their lives in future. We could invest in building social, high-quality housing, which could create thousands of jobs, bring down waiting lists, and make a huge impact and a real difference to the future of those children. Those who are serious about social mobility have to be serious about social housing. We're facing freezing temperatures this weekend. One in six households in the UK is facing fuel poverty, and fuel bills are set to carry on rising. If we invested in a rolling program of insulation house by house, street by street, we can make people warmer, put more people into work, and reduce our carbon emissions. So there are alternatives. We need to come out of this crisis with a strong welfare state, 
people lifted out of poverty, not being deliberately pushed into it, a more equal society, strong public services, we can reduce homelessness and we can move on the environmental crisis. There's a lot to protest about. We're not just about protest. We're about positive ideas which can make a difference. Acting together, we can have a stronger society, a new sense of direction. We don't need savage cuts. We need solidarity. We need vision. And we need action. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jane.